I'm Alex. I'm James. And I'm Dan. We're the Ragmuffins, and we want to know what makes a perfect gig. Every episode, we invite on a guest to tell us their dream four-band gig from opener to headliner, and we have a little chat along the way. This time, we asked Stu from SMTV. Aside from his perfect gig, we found out more about his channel, about his vlogs and his content, as well as the amazing time he had at the Linkin Park Experience playing with 999 other musicians. Check it out. Enjoy. Right, well, we're here with Stu from SMTV. How are you doing? Good evening. I'm very good. Thank you very much, and thank you for having me. Of course. Um, start so, straight off the bat. It's like the return leg. It is. So uh, we've, yeah, we've yeah. been on your podcast, and now here you are on ours. Mm-hmm. We just so, can't get enough. <laughs> exactly. Like, just keep it going. So if, if people haven't checked that out, go over to Stu's channel. Uh, link will be in the description below, and you can go and check out our chat with uh, Stu, where he asked us, who the fuck are the rag- ragamuffins? And find out why the hell I'm dressed as Toad. There is, yeah, there is. Reasoning. We're not explaining it. Questions <laughs> need answers. I don't know how long I'm going to keep this on for. I might take it off in a few minutes. We'll see. <laughs> see how long you last. Yeah. Place your bets in the comments now. Um, so, I mean, just straight off the bat, first of all, uh, for people that may not have seen your channel or don't know who you are, just let us know a bit about you and, and kind of what you do. Yeah, sure. So I'm Stu, um, otherwise known as SMTV in the online world. Uh, I started a YouTube journey just basically. My, my very first video was just telling people recommending what to pack, how to prepare for Download Festival. Um, It was just something I fancied doing. I've always tried YouTube over the years and I've never truly stuck to it, different ventures and whatnot. Um, And then from there, I just started vlogging festivals, gigs, and now we've moved on to podcasting and yeah, it's it's going great. And I'm very happy to um, be in a position where people like the ragamuffins want to invite me onto their podcast so it's yeah, i'd like to yeah. think it's going well yeah <laughs> you say you kind of dabbled in bits beforehand as well what was the main prompt that kind of really given this a crack and starting that back in 2023 um what made me really want to try and stick at it this time mm. yeah um probably the expense of buying a gopro <laughs> and, <laughs> and not wanting it to be a waste of money <laughs> you want it to be an investment at that point rather than just yeah mm-hmm but uh, no, it, init- getting the initial um, uh, reactions from people watching the videos, having people actually commenting and seeming genuinely interested in what I had to say. Uh, I mean, things I may have put out in the past where you, I'm sure there's people out there who have put videos up and literally get no response at all, no, com- no comments, no likes, no views, and it just kind of does put a dampener on it. So the initial interaction with people watching was uh, what made me want to carry on i think yeah awesome well today we're going to find out your perfect gig from opener to headliner but first we want to know what was the first gig you ever went to all right so my first ever gig um i was talking to my sister about this the other day actually because this band has just been announced for download next year so my first ever gig i'm told that i was dragged along because i didn't particularly want to go it was uh, mcfly at the wolverhampton civic so I was I was too young to be left at home. So I was uh, I was given a ticket and uh, dragged along by the sounds of it. But I'm happy to say I am very much a McFly fan now. So I mean, there are definitely worse gigs to be dragged along to, aren't there? Oh, I'm sure. Yeah. I mean, my wife's first gig was, um, I believe it was Miley Cyrus. So I'd like to think that. Um, I mean, Miley Cyrus is good. Don't get me wrong. She's got some tunes, but yeah. I, w- I would definitely rather go to the McFly gig. I think. Yeah. hundred <laughs> percent. That's a guarantee in there. I was trying to see if there's a Miley Cyrus joke floating around in this hat in somewhere, somewhere. but yeah, it's, it's, it's not in there. It's not in there. Um, speaking of gigs, should we get to your perfect gig, Stu? How are you kicking things off? I'd what love band to are starting so, off the night. I'd like to think because it's my perfect gig, I could choose any band. Yep, yep, absolutely. Currently touring, to disbanded, yeah, alive or dead, any, anybody. Any yeah. to, I will say as well, just to give you something on the fly, you can have any specifics for a set. If you want a certain album being played in full, if you want certain songs, you've got free reign over all of that as well. Right, so I'll see what I can implement. It's probably going to end up being just greatest hits from each band, but uh, I'll see if I think of something on the fly. Um, so I could just go ahead and choose any random selection of bands, but I would like to have some slight consistency in like mm-hmm. genre and vibe. Um, it might be a bit loose here and there, but I didn't want to just go and throw random bands out there. So like pit 
anyone else wouldn't want to go as well, if you know what I mean. So we've gone with that. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to try and introduce them, and then you've got to try and guess. Ooh. Okay. 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 This is, oh, this this is, is different. Good. This hasn't happened yeah. before. <laughs> so I wanted to start with someone who's going to get me in the right mood for a good night, and I do like me a good sing song. So I've taken some good time to think about what band do I know a lot of the words for. Now, I've seen this band a number of times, most recently at Download Festival this year on the main stage. Hard Rock, Deep South Influence, Catchy Tunes. Can you guess who that is? Blackstone Cherry? And he's got it in one. It is Blackstone Cherry. Well done. That's one one point to me. (laughs) One out of three so far. Yeah. So, although not like on frequent rotation of bands, but whenever I listen to them, I can't help but sing along and the energy they bring to the stage, um, it'll set me on the right track for the rest of the evening. I wanted someone to really get, mm. you know, mm-hmm. the evening off to a right start. So, yeah. Black- how, how did you first discover them? Um, Blackstone Cherry may have been a byproduct of meeting my wife, I think. Okay. So, we, we met through music. Um, I mean, we can... We can dive into that. I don't know how much time you guys have got. No, I've got time. Time. You, you give us the story. <laughs> so we, um, my friend's band was playing at a pub in Wensbury, and she was the singer for the support band. Um, in watching her, I remember she sang songs like Jailbreak, Thin Lizzy, and, and a couple others, that's a Shine Down song. And I remember leaning to my friend and saying, the singer is fit, like <laughs> proper fit. Um, but it was just one of those fleeting interactions and uh didn't see her the rest of the evening but uh, anyway i went on to my friend's twitter account who was the singer of the main band and she tweeted them saying thank you for the opportunity to support so from there we were in i was in a band currently as well and we were after a singer so i said if you ever fancy a go come and sing for our band so she uh, she came around to um uh to a practice session and i said to the rest of the guys look let's let's not mess this up Nobody try and get on her. And um, yeah, 10 years later, I'm married with her child. So <laughs> safe to say our Sneaky, band didn't move any further. Quell in the competition. Listen, lads, step back. Don't, no funny business. Hi, I'm Stu. Nice to meet you. Yeah. <laughs> so then she introduced you to Black, Blackstone Cherry then? Yeah, so we were very much in the same taste at that point so she introduced me to like blackstone cherry and we very big on bands like alterbridge tremonti um you know all that hard rock really so yeah she she brought blackstone cherry along with her which is great any particular songs that would be big highlights for you that you'd want to have in that set yes Uh, my favorite song of theirs is like i roll uh it's just such a a nice song, should we put it that way? It, it's just like to listen to the words and the the, the chord progressions. Every, everything about it is just it's just nice. It's like the kind of song you'd listen to with the windows down, driving in the summer kind of thing. Um, but I remember, mm-hmm, I remember this year when they played Download. It had been raining all day. I mean, you guys know how bad the rain was at Download this year. Yeah, and I'm pretty sure just as they started that song, the clouds parted and we actually had a rainbow that ended on at main stage whilst they were playing that song. So. It's um, it's a special one. I really like that song. Hell yeah! And you've got control. I mean, you could get Blackstone Cherry to invite your wife up to sing a song if you'd like. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> Blast from the past. If, if she wants to, I mean, yeah. don't don't force her. <laughs> just just hopefully there's no other scumbags like me who's going to poach her. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's talk a bit more about Download. Uh, your first one was in 2012, correct? 2012 was my very first year. Yeah. Talk to us about that because we were all too young to be there i think but before we move on i might just take this costume off yeah, now because yeah. Stu's just told us a lovely story about how he met his wife and we're about and to we're gonna ask soon about the chester bennington charity tribute concert and it seems a bit inappropriate <laughs> <laughs> sorry right, carry yeah, so, on so 2012 was my very first and my sister had gone for her very first the previous year and i'd heard nothing but good good stories um she actually rang me during Avenged Sevenfold and they're playing Nightmare because that was my favourite song of the time. So the earliest stages of FOMO that I ever experienced, I think, was that year. Mm -hmm. So the following year, I knew I had to go. So I pestered my parents and they decided, yeah, you can go. As a 17-year-old, Stu, that probably wasn't 
the best parental decision, but I thank <laughs> them for it now. And yeah, it was great. That year we had, was it Black Sabbath, uh, Prodigy, and who was the other headliner that year? I, I wish I could was. remember. But no, it was great. It was like a first, uh, like coming of age, if you will, like being mm -hmm. a 17-year-old and just being handed crater ciders, a tent, enough pot noodles to keep you going for the weekend and a handful of cash and just go and do what you want for the weekend. And it started, we, it's got me where I am now, still enjoying it all these years later. So I'm, I'm grateful for that experience, definitely. Thinking back to that in 2012, are there any like core memories of certain bands that really kind of stand out as a highlight for your first ever download? Core memories, um, I mean, how how was the weather as well? Was that a dry year or was that a dreadful? Wet one? It was one yeah. of the worst I've witnessed, to be honest. Yeah, this was prior to the ve the village being on tarmac, mm. so the village was literally like a chocolate river, like Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. We remember that from 2019, in particular. Yeah, that was, was rough, that was a, a rough one. A lot of just sludge everywhere. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. So it was a very wet one. Uh, core memories. There's something I wish Download would bring back that I'll remember witnessing that first year. And it was uh, Rocky Oki in the village where they had their own yeah. tent. Um, I think it was called the Dog House. Um, I, th I think it's still called the Dog House. But they used to have everyone in there as a crowd that have a full band on stage. And then you could approach the stage and say, oh, I want to sing this song. And if it's mm. in their repertoire go for it you can get on stage and sing it yeah that's something that that sounds like something that go down really well I'd, i think they should bring that back yeah and I, I just remember this one guy getting up on stage and absolutely killing pardon the pun killing in the name of and yep. like he's splitting the crowd and it was incredible <laughs> so i'd probably say that was that was a core memory of all the things that happened that weekend that's probably one of the things i actually remember so let's let's say they brought that back for next year if you had a song in particular that you would go for what Ooh. would it be what song would I go for? It would probably be Linkin Park with Faint. Oh, yeah. Solid choice. That's a phenomenal choice. That's great. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> In fact, I was driving home from work today. having I've managed to secure us both tickets to see them at Wembley today. So mm -hmm. I've Our result. driving home today. Uh, I've just had them full blast. So I had my own little rendition. <laughs> You're, you're rehearsing ready for next year, essentially, That's if it, it comes yeah. back. That's, that's all it is. Preempting it, yeah. Oh, 100%. Um, one thing I did kind of pull up uh, when I kind of just like was watching some videos and bits and pieces were you mentioned something about doing a morning radio show for Kerrang. Correct, yeah. Tell me about it. How did that come about and, and what was that kind of experience like? Yeah, so that was all um, thanks to my sister, mention her again. Uh, she used to work for Kerrang Radio when it was in Birmingham, mm -hmm. and it's where it originated. And they used to have a charity called Cash for Kids, and they used to do, um, like, what would you call it? Like people would bid on prizes, and that year one of the prizes was to go on and present a morning show with Johnny Doom. Mm -hmm. And uh, for it must have been my birthday or Christmas, but one of the years she bid and she won that, so I ended up going. And presenting a morning show on Kerrang Radio, which was a real <laughs> brilliant experience, I must say. Did you get like control over some of the songs that were getting played and everything? Yeah, so I mean, I, I was nowhere near as talkative as I am now. I, I could talk mm -hmm. for hours now, but back then I was um, couldn't get as many words out of me. But I was just chatting away with him. He he had his songs queued up, and then towards the end, he says, "Look, do you want to choose a song?" So yeah, I got to choose a song. And what was it? It was Metalingus by Alterbridge. Oh, nice. Is it about time for a second band? I think it I is. Think, yeah, I think it might be. Who, who Give us the teasers of who's going to be following Blackstone Jerry. Okay, so next up is a band who will get the room moving, the walls sweating, and everyone committing the biggest opening of a pit you'll ever see. I first heard them when playing the incredible Guitar Hero 3, which I got for Christmas in 2007. I since recall them providing the song for the closing credits of The Matrix... And a member of this band also played Download this year. Can you guess who it is? So I was leaning towards Slayer, but I don't no, know about the end credits thing. It's not. It's it's Slipknot, isn't it? No, it's not. Because I was thinking my Plague's Resident Evil, actually, not Matrix. I was say, um, this this isn't a hint, by the way. 
<laughs> oh, I didn't even see what it was. Um, Alex is our movie guy. Who? What, are the, on, what are the closing Matrix. credits of the Matrix? Trying to think. I'm, trying to think. Um, I'm so glad you're not guessing every one of them. Can we you're, have one song? You're exposing us. No, no. If no, I told you no. one song, you'd get it straight away. My brain's stuck between trying to think of the track list from the game and who could have mm. been on the Matrix soundtrack. Like we I can't up, think about either of them. Now. We grew up playing a lot of Guitar Hero 3, so I'm racking my brain thinking through that. Oh, going to get it's, people moving. It's one of the biggest songs on Guitar Hero 3. There's even a character based off that. Oh, is it Rage Against the Machine? It's Rage Against the Machine. Yep. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> oh, yeah. Tom Morello was it? Tom Morello. On his yeah. solo was, project. Yeah. Okay. yeah, I forgot Hell about yeah. that. There you right. go. Talk so it's going to be Rage they Against the Machine, but because I can just choose... just mentioned. That should have been fresh in our brains. <laughs> How have we not got that? Well, I didn't want to say I've just mentioned the band, because you'd get it <laughs> straight away, of course. So it's Rage Against the Machine, but it's going to feature Chris Cornell. Yes. Oh. Yes. I like that. So like a Rage Audio Slave kind of hybrid. You set. got it. Yeah. That's absolutely perfect. Um, have you seen Rage before? I haven't, so I've never seen, but I'm dying to. I mean, their li live performance at Finsbury Park is astounding. If you haven't seen that on YouTube, you should really check that out. Um, but yeah, to, to see them live is definitely on my bucket list. Yeah, absolutely. Like I'm enamoured with watching the Woodstock set, yep. where they burn the flag. That's such a good set. Is there anything specific you'd want to hear? Any certain songs from, from either band? Uh, so Balls on Parade, Bomb Track, Killing in the Name of, um, Coach Ice... Any anything from them, it, you know for a fact the room's going to be jumping and it's all bangers, isn't it? It's going to be yeah. carnage. Yeah, oh, I love that. That's a put and that's only the second band on. So we we've always done general camping at Download, and you've you've done your video, which has done kind of helped launch you as well with it, um, which is phenomenally well done about the rest in peace camping. So after now having done both videos about it and kind of having a bit more of a discussion about it. As we've never done Rest in Peace, what, what are the big pros, what are the cons, and why should we think about doing that? So I'd say the biggest con is the price. We'll get that one out of the way. We uh, Download if you're listening, sort it out. But the prom, pros probably outweigh the cons. If you're such a big fan of the festival and you're in a position where you can you know, put some cash away each month for the 12 months, if you're in such a position, then yes, go for it. If not, general camping is just as good, if not better, because of the vibe you get and the people you're around. Uh, but the pros you've got, you can park next. For myself, I did Sleepy Hollow. I was able to park my van right next to my car, so there was no messing about lugging stuff around the site. Uh, the showers, I was having a shower every single morning. So is that already to like a usual general camping goer at download? It just sounds like a dream. Mm. Because w the main cons of, the, of general camping at download is how far you've got to walk and like the queues for the showers and things. All the showers just not being ac accessible. So I already, music to my ears, I think if you ignore I, the price. I did wait, I think it was at one point last year, about an hour and a half just to have a shower, which was, I needed it. But it was... Yeah, you did. It, oh, wow. <laughs> thank you. Uh, but yeah, it was like, it was definitely a, a cue for that. Um, okay. I'm intrigued. If, if you... You say you're, you're going next year. Are you are you doing general if you're going to go that way? Or you, would you go rest in peace? Uh, it, it's going to be general um, mm -hmm. moving forward, really. I mean, that year was probably a bit of a... Um, bit of a silly purchase on my part, but... If you say it launched my uh, YouTube career, if we want to call it that, then yeah, I'd, I'd say it was worth the poor the financial decision. <laughs> but um, yeah, moving forward, I'm going to be general. It's where my friends are. Last year, although we had the rain, it was still just as much of an enjoyable experience. We really didn't struggle. So moving forward, I'll I'll be with the with the scruffs. Well, you're a bit of a download veteran by now. What would be like your ultimate top tip? for a newbie for if they're, if next year is their first year take time to think about what you're going to pack um writing a pack list and packing efficiently is the best thing you can do like something i started doing is buying ziploc bags but larger ones and then separating your clothes into 
categories if you want to. So socks in that one, underwear in that one, t-shirts in that one, sleepy wear, sleepwear in that one. Um, and then if it rains as well, none of your clothes get wet. And yeah, just, just think about what you're packing. Don't overpack, but at the same time, you want to be comfortable. So you're allowed a few luxuries. Yeah, I've always had a problem with overpacking. So this year, I kind of was like, I just decided on outfits beforehand. I was like, this is what I wear on Friday. This is what I wear on Saturday. And it just means you don't take too much stuff with you. So I'm, I'll have to maybe pair up that idea with the Ziploc bags next I year. I do like that idea. Yeah. yeah. It's like everyone does it. It's like you're packing your underwear. And you're like, okay, I'm going for, what would it be? Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. So I need bare minimum four pairs of boxers. But what happens if I shit myself for four yeah. days? Well, of course. Yeah, you need to <laughs> shit yourself. I'm going to take Everyone. 20 just to be on the safe side. Just in side. case, yeah. <laughs> I haven't shit myself in years, but this might be the weekend, so I have to pack for Exactly it. that. Just yeah. avoid those Yorkshire puddings, you'll yeah. be fine. Oh, oh God. Yeah. Oh, God. Just to kind of finish up on stuff with next year, that the lineup's now out. It wasn't out when we last had a chat. Uh, who are you kind of most excited for and wanting to see next year? Yeah. I mean, firstly, I want to applaud Dan on his... Uh, Getting Thank correct. You. Thank you. At one so of the headliners, his ego, of course. His ego can't token. take it anymore. Yeah. I was, I'm guessing oh. he hasn't shut up about it now. No, I'm insufferable. No, I've been no, waiting no. for you to ask me about it actually and mention it. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, in terms of the lineup, I'd say I'm happy. Yeah, definitely. Green Day is a band I've never seen, always wanted to see. Sleep Token's obviously going to be interesting at the very least. Um, I'm, I am a Sleep Token fan, so I'll enjoy that regardless of um, how many people turn up. And Corn, always a good show. I've seen Corn a number of times, and I'm more than happy to see them on the main stage. See what see what they can bring. Any undercard suggestions that people should check out that maybe they haven't heard of? Yeah, for sure. Uh, Polaris, hundred percent. People should be checking out Polaris. The Ghost Inside. I've had a bit of a hiatus on Ghost Inside, but after listening to them the other other evening, I'm very much reinvested. So you should check them out. I'm very intrigued to see uh, the Sex Pistols with Frank Carter. Um, I grew up on the Sex Pistols. My dad was a big fan, so that'll be uh, that'll be interesting to see. That the videos I've seen have been exciting. Like, it looks like a good show. Yeah, definitely. It's going to be interesting for sure. I mean, seeing two old guys um, being fronted by Frank Carter with such energy, it'll be mm. interesting to see. Um, anyone else I can think of off the top of my head? Bullet, Bullet will be incredible. I'm sure being so high up the bill, they're going to bring flames and such a good show. So, For them in particular, they headlined Trees 2023 last year, wasn't it? Yeah, um, I think so, yeah. And I, I think there's a bit of apprehension in terms of how that would be. And the production they brought was really good. It was kind of one of the most surprising sets because a lot of people weren't sure how it was going to go down. And I remember being very kind of blown away and surprised by that. So I think having a good slot on download it could be very good and I'm very intrigued to see if it kind of gets stepped up to another level so I reckon you'll enjoy it yeah I mean if we end up getting like a bullet into corn um, oh, on the main stage that would be that'll be pretty very sick nice. a wonderful one too mm -hmm. I think we're ready for the third teaser the third band okay so it's a band I've seen once and honestly went into it kind of liking them but I left as a huge fan uh, and to this day, I hold it in my top five performances I've seen of all time. Uh, the one of the originators of metalcore, and with a without a doubt have written one of the greatest metalcore tunes of all time. If you don't guess this one, I'll be very surprised. They've had two singers, both of which are held in Go very on. high regard with fans. Can you guess who it is? Kill Switch Engage. Yeah. Correct. <laughs> Hell yeah. Okay, interesting... I have a question. Do you have a preference over vocalists? Uh, well, what eras, should we say? Having only seen Jesse perform, I'd probably say he's my preference. And he, he killed it. The instance that I've seen them was when they headlined Bloodstock last year. And it was yeah. truly just incredible. As I say, I went into there knowing the songs, but not knowing them enough to say yeah i'm a huge fan but after seeing them i've never never witnessed a band that's actually just completely twisted my opinion on them so much so they hold a special place in my heart now i mean i've written here only seen them once and that was at bloodstock 2023 uh, their set is just engraved into my mind it was just non-stop tune after tune which sometimes works at gigs other times you do like a bit of chat in between but 
it just became relevant that they've got so many tunes that that can fill a set list without even trying really um but this was this was part of the first weekend i've spent with the guys that i now call my very very close friends um simon you know simon simon bond youtube superstar i'm sure he'd appreciate that um, <laughs> only. chids vids ben and then a few other of my friends alex lewis shane and dean and although being surrounded by people that i don't know with newly found friends i, I just felt so at home in that moment and it, it was just the best feeling so that's why they were up there for me again with control over the set are you are you wanting both vocalists to be there i mean that would be great let's be honest yeah to have Absolutely, both of them yeah. just going at it at the same time would be incredible a bit, of, a bit of back and forth between them between songs and then i can't remember the name of it but there was that one where they did it together didn't they uh, yeah the signal fire that's it called. Mm. That could yeah. be like a good encore, like like ending song or something like that, just where you finally have them come together, the anticipation. Yeah, build. yeah. I mean, being as it's my dream gig, my perfect gig, then yeah, why not? We'll have both of them. So, Stu, you were lucky enough to to play uh, with nine hundred and ninety nine other musicians at the the Lincoln Park Experience. Um, what what was it like getting to getting to do that? It, it was truly incredible. I mean, it it's gonna be. In, up there with some of the most incredible things I've done in my life, for sure. Uh, and for such a good cause as well, it was for um, the Uproar Mental Health Foundation, which allows people to, to receive um, mental health um, coaching and just, you see, yeah, the, yeah, um, yeah. Go to it online It survives the pits of download and free of charge it, because it lives a life of luxury at the tip of my... Um, but, uh, but, but no, great, yeah. great cause. And, <laughs> and then it was incredible just to be... We'll in keep those videos um, on the OnlyFans. Only like-minded people because <laughs> everyone there was incredible all there for the right reasons and just being able to not only enjoy the music that we love but to actually perform it as well it, it was truly something special i must say i really did enjoy seeing headstock cam on the end of the guitar that that, that gopro there i thought that that was that was a cool little addition with it um so he's getting his money's worth out of that gopro yeah you've got really you. got get it get it used <laughs> <laughs> not, 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 I'm not sure about that stutter. <laughs> but yeah, great experience. Um, we got to perform numb, and in the end, everyone was sent out individual videos of how to play it, whether it was guitar, keyboard, drums. Um, there may have been something for vocalists, but I'm not entirely sure. But uh, there was a band on stage, which was it was like Link and Park, which was like the the forefront of the Linkin Park tributes going. Um, joined on stage by some members of bands as members of Bullet, Mallory Knox, uh, The Blackout, Defects. There were so many people on stage. I was like, I'm actually playing an instrument technically with these other musicians that yeah. I've grown up listening to. So it was brilliant. You jam with them. Exactly that, yeah. Mm -hmm. So before we kind of get to your headliner on this gig, um, to go back to the channel what what should people expect to see from you going forwards and are there any little nuggets or things that you're going to want to try out and do uh things i'd want to try out i mean there's always ideas going through my mind i'll be honest uh, i spoke to the guys over on my patreon about this thinking what, what else can we do i mean to be honest now we're back into having some news about festivals um that will probably be predominantly what we've got going on but it would be wonderful if i can get some kind of travel vlogs going on and i've always teased at the idea of doing some i mean i'm a big guy i can put some food away so it'd be good to do some like eating challenges maybe uh i've recently <laughs> i don't know if you've seen him i've recently started a watching of the i think it's beard meets food i was obsessed with it he's great a few yeah. months ago and I, yeah. i've I've just been watching a few of those recently and I'm actually, I, I'm desperate to try a food challenge somewhere, but I, there's the, the nervousness of being like, am I actually going to be able to do it? But we should do it. I feel SMTV like ragamuffin food I'm, challenge. I'm very much down for that. <laughs> I can see you doing a donut one. I mean, you basically have done donut eating challenges on done, some of our vlogs. I have done as a challenge, someone got a, a dozen Krispy Kremes and they said, how quick do you think you can eat these? And I was like, oh, maybe like 20 minutes. And I got it in 18. So... I feel if I did a bit of training, I kind of find out some actual tips of this. 
I feel like, yeah, we could we could do an eating challenge at some point. I think that'd be fun. The collab everyone has been waiting well, for. Yeah. You'll have to do it at a festival <laughs> or something. You know so. how da- you know down yeah, have the hot yeah. dog eating contest this year. So we'll if they to... do that next year, I think I think we enter. Who can we reach out to? Trees, maybe. I, I think too fair though. If Darren have got the hot dog eating one, would you prefer the hot dog one or the chili one? Well, I'll tell, I'll let you in with a little secret. I was actually signed up for <laughs> the uh, the chili eating contest. Um, <laughs> how were you? <laughs> up until probably a week before it was going on. I was actually going to, on the way home, I was going to Asda and I was buying uh, like Carolina Reapers, bird's eye chilies, and I was just eating them out of the fridge every now and then trying to train up. But one or two wet farts later, I thought, I can't be doing this at Downhouse Fest. <laughs> Good job you packed those spare boxes though, innit? <laughs> uh, technically, I was actually um, packing as I should that year. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, definitely. <laughs> but no, I, I, I emailed them saying, "Look, um, uh, unfortunately, I'm not going to be arriving until the Friday." When in reality, do, I really was arriving on the due, Thursday. Due to unforeseen circumstances, <laughs> you were walking around in a disguise in the crowd, so they didn't see. Yeah. Hang on a second, you should be on the stage. Just, just a larger moustache over the top of this. Yeah. One. <laughs> I think it's time. It's a headline of time. I think it's time. It is time. Who? Okay. Give us the teaser. So the fourth and final band, the headliner. I'd like to think that anyone who's watched, listened to the podcast or, you know, just enjoyed anything of SMTV or is a friend of mine, you'd be able to guess this. Yeah, I think I, I think I've, I could guess who it is, but I've, I've, held, I've held off asking a question about this band already. I've got a guess so in mind as well. well. We'll hear the teasers. So I followed this band and would hold them as my favourite band since late 2011. Uh, I can't remember how I discovered them, but they very quickly became the band I listened to, walking to sixth form, listening to on YouTube whilst on the computers or laptops in lessons, listening to them walking home, and then listening to them all evening. I've seen them a grand total of eight times and already already have tickets to see them for a ninth time next year when they return to the UK as part of their European tour. Their early work was heavily influenced by the ocean, as they're all surfers at heart. <laughs> yeah. They've soon become one of the biggest metal Korg bands on the planet. Can you guess who it is? Should we say it on three? Yeah. Let's say it on three. One, two, three. Parkway, Parkway Drive. Drive. Correct. See, I thought it was going to be Linkin Park. You thought it was Linkin <laughs> Park? I thought it was going to be Linkin Park until I heard the teasers. Oh, come on. And yeah, when you said 2011, I was like, no. All right, then. <laughs> uh, Parkway. Fine. Um So I, I guess the way you spoke about it being very formative and kind of a foundation of, of music listening, especially with like heavy stuff, when you say you're kind of walking to sick form and then just listening to it. And you say you don't remember necessarily like where you found them, but kind of growing up through the years and having such a long time listening to that band, has, has your relationship changed with their music over time at all? Uh, it definitely did. I mean, I, I don't know how in tune you guys are with the albums, but they went from... Uh, Deep Blue, well, Horizons, obviously. Horizons to Deep Blue, we, very, very similar. Uh, and then from Deep Blue, they went to Aya, I believe, which, again, it was similar, but there was a few more dad rock hits, if you will. Um, and just with each release, they seemed to become a bit more dad rock. And then some of the releases at the time, I thought, this is it's getting a bit boring now, and I tuned out a little bit. I don't know if it's becoming a dad. I'll, it, it's in your in your blood you just kind of start enjoying that kind of music a bit more but after i mean sometimes it happens doesn't it you listen to a song for a first time fleetingly and you just think no i don't like that and then you come back to it later and you're like why didn't i enjoy this earlier um but so there was a bit of a hiatus on them very briefly but now i'd I'd like to think i'm very much just as involved and as invested as i was back back in 2011. did you manage to get in the tent for their we say secret set this year just gone wasn't a very well but everyone secret, kind of thought it? it was going to be them anyway but did you manage to get in there for it because it was packed yeah yeah I mean oh what, what, who were we watching we were watching Royal Republic who is a band that we did want to see but we were looking over at the tent like over our shoulder every now and then thinking it's getting a bit busy over there so we ended up heading over there an hour before the secret band was due to start and uh, yeah we managed to get right in the middle of it and if anyone's interested, I uploaded um, majority of the set to YouTube, so go and check that out. And they actually used some of your trusty GoPro footage themselves, didn't they? They did. Yeah, the GoPro is really making a name for itself now because uh, 
Yeah, we need, we need to get you a sponsorship deal with GoPro. I, I think so, <laughs> for sure. Yeah, um, get an SMTV limited edition GoPro going on. Yeah, I like it. So yeah, I was just sat at work one day. I was working. Where was I working now? Can of chase. I was working, just doing some intruder alarm work, and just random message off someone I didn't recognise the name of, and I thought I'd read it. And essentially, it was um, Park Red Rose videographer saying that he's enjoyed my videos and he just wondered if uh, I'd be happy to allow him to use uh, my pit cam footage in one of their official videos. And like I say, from listening to a band from 2011 religiously to then being told, yeah, look, we're going to use your footage in one of the band's official videos was truly incredible and mm. definitely up there. How many times do you say you've seen them now? So eight times next year is going to be nine. Are they the band you've seen the most? Ooh, it's a good question. It's either going to be them or While She Sleeps. I think it is going to be Parkway, to be honest. Any particulars for the set then? As you, you've kind of delved and you talked about different albums, were there, are there certain albums that you would like in full potentially or would it be just a span of discography? I think if I could see them multiple times for multiple perfect gigs, I would say, yeah, I'd love to see each album played in full on different evenings but I'd probably say I'll take their 2013 sets normally was where it was at where they'd close with Carrion um, that was always a perfect closer for me and it really upset me when they started closing with Bottom Feeder instead so if we can get them closing on Carrion again that would be perfect so a general best of but maybe some earlier cuts rather than majority newer albums a bit more of a throwback carrion might be one of the best like metal core set clothes definitely i mean deep gun. blue you'll have to forgive me because i can't remember the guy's name but adam the guitarist of kill switch engage he actually produced yeah. that album deep blue and there's some brilliant behind the scenes footage of him um playing the riffs but if you actually then go and listen to kill switch the amount of similarities in the production and like the like the ethereal sounds that they've got got going on lead, leading up to like this massive breakdown, it's all very kill switch engaged. So that's probably why I found this cross um, between the two bands of why I love them so much. I think with uh, a band like Parkway Drive, especially seeing footage from their recent tour, um, production is probably a good thing to sort of talk about here as well. Do you have anything in mind that you'd want to see from them production wise? They seem to like their fire quite a lot at the moment. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I mean, it's nice to see bands that, instead of just being that band that's on stage with these instruments and this this microphone, this is what we do. Give us all your money. It's nice to see the bands that you can see where the money's going. Mm -hmm. I feel Parkway Drive is very much an example of this. So, in seeing what they've done, I mean, personally, I've tried to avoid as many spoilers as I can. So it's so fresh when I see them next year. But I just can't Sorry help myself that. sometimes. But uh, <laughs> uh, so, so yeah, it, it's incredible to see them just growing exponentially, and they're going to be headlining download for sure. I think particularly that that set they did in in twenty three, the crowd they drew. Um, I think it's very evident that they're on that pathway. It is going to be happening. Uh, pathway drive. The pathway drive. Um, but no, I think, I think yeah, it's inevitable essentially really right now, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, it's nice going from the first time I saw them was at the Birmingham Ballroom, which is no longer a venue. It hasn't been for a number of years now, but to see them in such a small venue and a thing with Parkway Drive is a lot of people like to sing the riffs. So sometimes rather yeah. than singing the words, because they might not know the words, they'll just sing the riffs instead. So to hear such a small room of the as the Bo Birmingham ballroom singing those riffs and then seeing the entire crowd at main stage download last year doing exactly the same on such a larger scale it's lovely it's like you've grown up with this band and you have a real you know you, you hold them close and uh, yeah you have a real pride about where they've where they've landed so you've seen them in big venues you've seen them in small venues but where would you like your perfect gig to take place Ooh, nice segue like it <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. You've, you've done this before i can tell a few times. <laughs> <laughs> so that's the lineup. Uh, the venue I'll be choosing to house the onslaught of Carnage uh, would very possibly be the venue I've spent the most time in over the years. Uh, I've seen bands of many genres. I'm, I'm a man of, yeah. I, I'll... Oh, is, it, is this a teaser for the venue as well? If you can guess the venue, I mean. Oh, let's go on, let's, let's do, do it. it. This, this could be fun. Yeah. 
Well, I'd seen many bands, different genres there. Knocked Loose, Two Door Cinema Club, Thy Art Is Murder, Manic Street Preachers, Good Charlotte, Amity Affliction, and the list goes on and on and on. Uh, it's great location-wise. There's always on-street parking for free. Plenty of bars and entertaining places to visit if you wanted to make a day of the gig. Uh, it's small enough to be intimate, but big enough to have the crowd go mental and have plenty of space to mosh and get the room moving. Hmm. It's obviously going to be a local one. It's going to be a Birmingham venue. See, I, I was thinking the Institute until you said on street parking. Because I'm not, I'm not sure there's I any mean, around there. I'd be happy to say that, uh, yes, it is the Institute. It is the Institute. Oh. <laughs> Fair enough. Oh. There we go. I am surprised you managed to guess that. Fair play. <laughs> so, yeah, the Institute. What What is it particularly about the venue then? Obviously, you kind of list off a few things there, but like... What's the, the one or two in particular highlights that kind of make you think that's where I'd want my perfect gig to take place? Uh, I think it's just so different from, I mean, we've all got a local O2 Academy, haven't we? And it's just, they're all the same. If you've been to one, I'm sure you've been to all of them. I'm not sure if some of them have other characteristics I'm not aware of, but with this one, I've actually written here, uh, it was actually built in 1908. So it's like really old school. It's all really like old original brickwork and it's almost like um uh, like you'd imagine seeing like big jazz bands or even i don't know like operatic performances back there in the day because it's also fancy looking so to see knock loose playing there um, last year was you know something special so yeah it, it's just great it's got character you can park outside down the streets of digbeth for free yeah it, it is great so I'm going to have to look into that street parking because I've always just parked at the ball ring. Oh, I'm, I'm clearly going wrong Mistake there. number one. I'll save, I'll save myself 20 quid next time. Yeah. If you park down the street, you may see one or two SMTV stickers as well. So, oh. yeah. we'll, we'll add oh, some ragamuffin stickers now. to it then. Over yeah. the top, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Continue the sticker war. That's it. So give us one final rundown from start to finish of your perfect gig and where it's taken place. So my perfect gig would open up with the incredible Blackstone Cherry. Get everyone singing along. Nice little ease into it as well. Second on the bill was, of course, Rage Against the Machine featuring Chris Cornell. The third band is Kill Switch Engage. And then the final band, your headliner, is, of course, Parkway Drive. And this all takes place at the Institute in Birmingham. I'm there. I'm so there. Oh, me too. Like, that's that's easy. That's, that's, a, that's a phenomenal I'm going to be jumping off that balcony, I reckon. Oh, I've 100%. <laughs> causing absolute carnage and chaos in that room perfect i'm glad you liked and i hope others out there liked as well oh, i'm, I'm oh, sure they will they'll be letting us know in that comment section i'm sure they will um just to close off then is there anything in particular you want to plug so you can find me over on youtube i'm smtv uh, i do videos about festivals music and gigs i'm currently breaking down the download festival lineup a bit of bloodstock will be mixed in there too soon and then you can also catch me over on the Trash Talking podcast over on Spotify and all good streaming platforms. And if I'm right in thinking, you're just below 1K at the minute, aren't you? I am. Um, as of, I'm not going to pretend I don't check every half an hour. Oh, <laughs> oh we check all the time. You're preaching to the choir right now. Yeah. Uh, I'm currently sat at 953 subscribers on YouTube. Right, so... 47 of you that are watching in particular more if if more of you even better 47 of you go ahead follow that link in the description go across and subscribe to you some amazing content over there uh, and also if you haven't done check out our episode of trash talking with him uh, we had a lot of fun with that the other day uh, we did so very much just enjoy all of it really um thank you very much for coming on thank you it's been a, a long time in the works it's been a long time in the works and uh I think we'll have to keep speaking about this potential food challenge at some point. That's it. It's coming up. Now, thank you so much it's, for coming it's on. It's been a pleasure. Um, I'm not going to lie and say that it was uh, exciting to have the ragamuffins message me. Um, when I was, <laughs> before I was doing my YouTube, you guys were definitely one of my inspirations to take it on. Um, I always remember watching the videos and I'd say to my wife, oh, these guys go to festivals and record it and people watch it. They're called the Ragamuffins. So to be sat here with you guys now and, you know, it, it's something special oh, and I appreciate, appreciate it. Thanks, every Steve. one of you.
that, that means a lot, man. And and the next thing is we then need to meet in person. That's it. It needs to happen. I mean, what what festivals we've, you guys got booked up so far? We've got. I think we've got download books now. Download Officially, we sure. have actually download books because yeah. when we talked last time, we were what, Outbreak had just announced they were doing it on the same weekend, but that download bill was it's too good, too good to pass up in any way. Um, uh, looking at Slam Dunk in particular, uh, yeah, yes, it will be South. We're us. booked up for South. Um, you're booked for yeah, South. We're going to be amazing. Sorted. We're going to be in each other's back pockets next year. I can right, see. It. Let's do it. Oh, yeah. We'll find a food van. Yeah, <laughs> Slam Dunk. Oh, there was a donut one this year. Yeah, there was, wasn't oh, there? That yeah. might be on there. I th- I'll, Sorted. We'll have to brainstorm some ideas on this for sure. I suspect we'll be at trees as well. Mm-hmm. I was, you, you've been considering trees. I you? have. I need to um, dip my toe. So potentially, I'll join you for that as well. Nice. And I'm, I'm hoping Bloodstock. Yeah. If you can get there, do it and join us. It's awesome. I'm, yeah. I'm down for that. Uh, yeah, once again, thank you very much. An amazing, perfect gig. Everyone go check out Stu and SMTV. And we'll see you next time for the next perfect gig. <laughs>